As we approach six months since the Israel-Hamas war, there is still so much trauma on both sides. Islamophobia is up, as is anti-Semitism, which has also seen a concerning rise over the last several years. The Jewish community here in Cleveland is working to push back against it. In fact, just last week, Cole Israel Foundation held a panel about talking to children about difficult situations. The ability to hear bad news and integrate it for young children does require that they have some sense of stability. So yeah, I would, I would be very careful with young children around all the words that send chills down all of our spines. Mm -hmm. So it isn't what you say the first time, it's what you're gonna be saying over time. And recently I spoke with an activist who invited, was invited to visit Northeast Ohio by the Jewish Federation of Cleveland to talk about the subject of anti-Semitism, to engage the community as an educator and social media leader in this space. For Hen Magic, October 7th feels like yesterday, a day filled with lots of pain, lots of conflict, and hopefully, he says, change. He's the co-founder of the Tel Aviv Institute, a research center that aims to combat anti-Semitism. And his research shows a dramatic increase in prejudice against the Jewish community since the attacks. The amount of anti-Semitism around the world has increased dramatically. He says there are many misconceptions circulating. People don't realize the connection of Jewish people to this land, and they don't th understand what Israel is, really is and the makeup of Israeli population. I mean, the majority of Israeli Jews are descendants of Jews from the Middle East and North Africa, like my family. After his family had to leave North Africa and Iraq due to anti-Semitism, Mazik was born and raised in Israel. Like all Israelis, he served in the Israeli military as a humanitarian officer working to help Palestinians in the Gaza Strip to build hospitals and roads. Now living in London, he's been open about his feelings about being Jewish today and his nuanced views about his country to his hundreds of thousands of followers on social media. How do you defend Israel? Yet in some of the clips that I did watch of you, you know, you are open about maybe some of the things that you don't agree with. How does that work? I think every American can probably relate to having leaders that you don't feel like speak for you and decisions being made that you don't feel like reflect exactly what you believe politically or uh, in social aspects. And he feels concerned for Gaza too. He's worked there over several years. Gaza could have been a modern city that could draw tourism and could have been a flourishing place with development and, and the beach in Gaza is gorgeous. There's, there's so much potential in this place and just because it was ruled by this terrorist genocidal organization that has such disregard to human lives. Um, it has been destroyed. Um, I, my heart is breaking for Gaza. My heart is breaking for the Palestinians that are suffering there. But the blame is, could not be put on Israel because Israel is responding and doing everything they can um, to fight a war that we didn't want it to start. He's hoping to reach more people with his platform. I think younger generation is where the hope lies. And if we focus on education on both the Israeli and the Palestinian side and we bring people together, we are fighting a campaign of dehumanization. And for us to humanize ourselves and each other is the only way to move forward.